Hello and welcome back to House Call Auto Repair. Today we're back on scene of a 2015 Honda uh, Civic. We did a brake pad slap on this vehicle, uh, I believe March of 2020, so a little over two years ago. Uh, I'll get you the mileage in a few minutes. Uh, I don't remember what the mileage was then. Uh, I did a code scan for the gentleman, but I didn't. Re I recorded everything, but because there wasn't any codes, I didn't save the data. So, unfortunately, don't have a mileage lapse between now and then. But we're going to be reviewing what I did during the previous brake job, and I'm going to put some emphasis on the caliper bracket and why the caliper bracket is probably one of the most essential parts of the entire job. So as I'd stated, uh, it was a little over two years ago, um, I think when I did the brakes I treated them with anti-seize or either silicone grease I'm not really sure but we'll figure that out when we get in there um, all we did was a pad slap but I also always reconditioned the caliper bracket always this time we're going to be replacing the rotors as well and you'll see why Start off by getting your vehicle securely up in the air and set down on a pair of uh, jack stands. Make sure to loosen up your lug nuts before you get the tire off the ground. In this case, they're 19 millimeter. on both sides. Get the car resting away up in the air. Normally you put the jack stand underneath the vehicle before removing the tire. In this case I'm going to remove the tire first so I can show you where I'm placing the jack stand. Take your tire, place it underneath the vehicle for additional safety. Now let's get that jack stand positioned. We're going to go right underneath the subframe, right there. channel right there so we don't damage the plastic and then go jack the other side off keep your die on your other jack stand make sure it's not tipping Again, pulling on one side and hitting the other side. Sometimes you have to resort to kicking. As we usually like to do, get in here to do inspection. Bushings are good, there's no tears, no cracks. No wetness around the, the boot. No cracks, no cracks. It's a little tight. I should, there we go. Okay. Again, steering rack looks good. See where I've got the, uh, the jack sitting underneath this bolt into the frame. It's not going to go anywhere. And the jack stand is 
sitting in a little groove underneath the subframe. Uh, we'll be letting him know that uh, that's not looking too good. It might just be excessive grease. We'll look at that a little bit more later. But uh, otherwise, everything in here looks pretty good. Let's check the other side. All right, down here. Everything here looks good. Yep, yeah, rock. Boot's good. Control arm bushings. This one here is starting to show a little bit of wear and rust, but it's not separated or cracked yet. Uh, again, nice and dry up above the boot. Uh, let's see, sway bar link. Yep, yeah, that's good. Bottom one's good, no issues. Uh, part of the rubber. That's a greasable. Good. And these brakes are definitely showing some wear now. Okay, well, let's get to breaking them down. Okay, for this next step, we're going to be needing the C press or the clamp, a hanger for the caliper, 12 millimeter wrench and ratchet to get the caliper bolts off. We've also got a 17 millimeter socket for pulling out the caliper bracket bolts. Now we'll begin by taking the C clamp and we're going to push the brakes back, push the piston back probably about a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch. We don't need to go very far, we don't want to go very far. So what we're going to do is we're going to put just a little bit of pressure. Moves nice and easy, means that caliper piston is in beautiful shape. It also is a good indicator that both of your slide pins are properly working. So those were not over torqued, and because Coming right out. I obviously did not use any uh, blue thread lock on the last time. We will be doing that this time, however. So it goes right there. And go ahead and work your caliper off the assembly. And then inspect your boot all the way around. Make sure there's no cracks or tears or holes or rips. Make sure everything's nice and clean, there's nothing damaged. Nothing looks like it's been scraping anywhere. So we're good to go. We're gonna hang this up for now. We're gonna take our hook. We're just gonna put it up over the spring. Probably easier if I go through the bolt hole in the caliper first. And then put the spring up. And we can just let it hang out of the way. Now, the last time we did these brakes, we had to reuse these clips because, well, the kit, for whatever reason, didn't have them. The new kit that we do have, we have now, does have these. But otherwise, make sure that you do not lose these little clips. They have to help separate your brake pads so that they have a return position, so to speak, uh, like this, so that they don't drag on the, on the rotor. Now, we've already verified that neither one of these brake pads are stuck, which is good, so we can go ahead and remove those now if we want, which I'm going to. Let's push them out. And then inspect the wear on it. One side wearing more than, than another. Inside, outside, top, bottom. Uh, in this case, it does seem to be just a hair bit uneven for the amount of wear that we have. Uh, I'd say that this is not bad at all. Not bad at all. And we just started getting to the, well, actually, I don't think we've actually made it to the squealer yet, but we're close on this one. Again, that's inboard pad leading edge for the squealer. Again, pretty evenly worn. And I must say, I am impressed with the fact that both the inboard and the outboards wore equally. 
That means that pretty much that uh, I can pat myself on the back for this brake job. Pad slap from last time. This time, these rotors are worn to the point where the rippling uh, is justifying a replacement, so we're going to be putting new ones on. And the clips, let's see, do I want to pop those out now? Yeah, why not? These were the hardware clips from last time. There's a little bit of rust on the bottom of them. Be careful with these because sometimes they can be really sharp and you can get cut on them. You don't want to get cut on something by something that's this dirty and nasty. But again, minimal rust on the bottom. And being that there's no presence of anti-seize, I'd have to say uh, that I think last time I did this I used silicone. But I'll have a link in the description below to the previous pad slap so you guys can review the process that I did uh, a little over two years ago. And we'll see how it pans out from there. Uh, still got the wrinkle wrinkle. Oh, oh, nice wrinkle wrinkle. Now let's get these rotors and caliper bracket off. Every single brake job you do, pad slap or otherwise, take the bracket off. Clean it. Lubricate it. And make sure you use some kind of an anti-corrosive protection on the caliper bracket so that your brake pads don't get stuck. If at any point in time you're just putting brake pads in and you're not taking the time to recondition this caliper bracket, you are not doing yourself or your customer any justice. This, especially up here in New England in the salt belt, this is the most critical part of the brake job. If this is not properly handled, your brakes will fail. We're going to take these out, clean them up, put fresh grease in them. We're going to clean up these edges right here, which actually look really nice compared to what I'm used to seeing. Uh, we'll finish getting these cleaned. Coat these with some anti-seize, put the new hardware clips on them. New Silaglide grease in the pins and new rotor. So let's get this taken care of. Now, when removing these kinds of screws, don't even bother with a Phillips screwdriver. Get yourself an impact set like this. We're going to use the largest bit that fits squarely in there, which I think is going to, well, that one feels a little bit large. Let's see what the smaller one feels like. Uh, that feels like it goes in deeper and gets a better bite. That's, that's the most important part. The wrong size bit will do damage to the screw, break the bit. But chances are good you're not going to be able to turn this by hand. So you give it a little... And, okay, that one turned with no problem. This one's being a little stubborn, so we're going to do this one left-handed. Now we're going to use some 6 millimeter by 1.5 thread pitch bolts in these holes right here. We're going to spray some penetrating oil in here to make these bolts turn a little easier in there because it's going to be a little rusty. If you're not sure which size bolts fit in the rotors, thread them into the brand new rotors first. If they fit, you got the right bolts. If they don't, find the appropriate bolt so you don't end up with an even bigger problem. These are slightly modified bolts. So we're going to turn those in, and those are going to be 13 millimeter, I think. That's 13. Run that all the way down in until it seats. Same thing with the other one. Uh, 
it all the way down into it. See, there you go. Pop the rotor loose. Now you can go ahead and take them back out. And we'll use them again on the other side. Didn't want to come loose. I'm just afraid of breaking my bits. I'll go grab the bigger bit. regular Phillips screwdriver you'd never get those out. Okay, we've got that one freed up. And check it, the piston, the boot, everything's nice. Go ahead and set this one up and out of the way. And go back here, I guess. And bracket. Take note of the brake pads, equal wear, top and bottom, inboard, outboard equally worn, so everything is moving as it should be. There's the wrinkle wrinkle, caliper bracket comes off nice and easy, brake pads move around, and little metal clips. Again this time we do not need to save these. And yes, I should be wearing gloves. Again, evenly worn top to bottom, in and out, we're good to go. Clips come out nice and easily. Some rust, a little bit of scaling in there, but not much. So the Scylla Glide that we put in here last time is pretty much gone, but it left the surfaces nice and clean. Alright, let's get this rotor off. Wow, really? A little taste of New England. Extra flavor. Yeah, lots of rust. Return back to Earth. Alright. And this, don't know what I coated it with, but it's still a little damp from the last time, which is good. We have no rust on, well, no buildup of rust on the surface. But we do have a special tool I've used a couple of times now that I'm really loving. This is a uh, hub buddy, impact rated, 
You just put it on your half inch drive impact. Um, it does, the bit does come undone, counter, you know, so make sure that you're turning clockwise with your drill bit, not backwards like that. And then just go right over to the stud. That cleans up everything around the stud nice and easy. The whole purpose for this is so that you don't have any high spots, chunks of rust, dirt, or anything like that. It's going to sit underneath your new rotor, which would cause a vibration. You don't want that. So this is all nice and cleaned up. A little spritz of brake cleaner. I like to spritz it and then, clean, then hit it again. around the outside of this too if you want. And then take some fluid film and spray it and I get the dust off of it. This is some very fast drying brake clean. There's a blow on it, it's dry. Now I'll take some fluid film and we'll spray all of the mating surfaces, a light coat of it, get around the outside of the hub too. And if you've got a rusty backing plate, it won't hurt your backing plate at all. Just spray that down as well, it'll inhibit the rust. This stuff soaks into the rust. Now it'll help actually make that backing plate, which is already perforated. It'll make what's left of it last longer. Clean up all your surfaces to it, including where your bracket bolts. You want to make sure that these are clean also, otherwise your uh, bracket won't set level. So now we clean up the rotor. It's got a new brand new rotor. It's got some oil on it from the factory to keep it from rusting while it sits on the shelf. So we're going to use some brake clean and spray that down. Now what I like to do is just give it a quick mist and let it sit for a second. Take a clean, clean cloth or clean rag. I spray the cloth and then I can wipe it down. Now this will leave a lot of fuzz on the outside of your rotor. That fuzz won't hurt anything, but if you want to get it off of there, you can just give it another quick rinse. Rinse it all off. The inside, you don't have to worry too much about. The little oil that's in here actually would be beneficial to leave, but get that all cleaned up. And then once that's dry, see I got fuzz on the inside, so I'm going to rinse that out. Just let this dry for a second. Once the rotor's had a chance to dry a little bit, we're just going to go right around the outside here. Get the excess off of that. Okay, now it's dry enough. We're going to put it on. Be weary of the holes that are going to hold this thing down, so you want to make sure you get these lined up. These holes right here. Just like so. Now we can put our little screws back in. I'm going to go get some thread locker for those. Okay, got my thread locker. Let's give the front end of this thing a good spray down. So you 
much, you know. Those little screws in one little tiny 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 little bit just a little tiny bit if I got any left in here yeah there we go that's about all you need just a little splash of it same thing with the other one just a tiny 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 little bit you do want to make sure that this is going to come back out for, for the next person and we'll thread those in Now you can tap this to tighten them up a little bit, but I'm just going to put these in hand tight. All right, now we start working on the bracket. All right, now let's get this caliper bracket cleaned up. Get the rust out of here. Some of what I'm doing here. I'm going to take them away. And it just gets most of the dust and dirt and scaling and stuff out of the way. It doesn't get all the scaling, but it gets most of the dust and the dirt out of the way. Now, anybody goes and puts a set of brake pads in your car and doesn't take the time to doing this. They're ripping you off. Make sure that your caliper bracket is reconditioned so that when your brand new brake pads, I'm going to use one of the old ones as an example, but when your brand new brake pads are in that bracket, you want to make sure that they move in and out of here with minimal resistance. Usually the hardware will give some kind of spring to it to keep it from rattling, but you still, you want to be able to move them in and out. Lubricating these ears is also controversial up here. If we lubricate these ears, it usually attracts salt and dust and dirt and it makes these things rot, rust and jack into place really, really quick. So we put the lubricant underneath the hardware brackets or the hardware clips rather than on the actual ears of the pad. So this is what it looks like now. Some, some bare metal, some scaling still on here. So we're going to take a file that's especially made for this and we're going to get that scaling off of there and then we're going to do pins. Now, Mueller caps specifically made for this. The top surface right here, these little ears, usually where the brake pad is applying all of its load when you're braking. So you want to make sure that this part right here is also smooth and level with these other ones. You don't want to take metal off, you just want to make sure that it's smooth it's level and clean. Doesn't have to be anything fancy, but you want to make sure that when you're doing this, always make sure you put equal amounts of pressure on both sides when you're doing this. See the spots that are turning brown, that's where the rust is actually coming off. And there's other ways that you can do this too. There's wheels that you can use. Uh, if they're really, really, really abrasive, be very careful because you can take metal down very quickly without realizing it. Now, once you've got all your surfaces perfectly cleaned up and you're satisfied, you can do a trial run fitment if you want. Put your hardware clips in and see how your brake pads fit in there when you're done. Uh, I'm pretty confident that I don't need to do that, but basically just put your hardware clips in, put your brake pads in, make sure that they move. If they bind up, come back, take your clips back out and get back to taking off rust on these little ears right here.
Now you will find with some cheap brake pads, you will find that when they stamp cut these things, that these edges right here are not even. So if they're not even, that is probably the, about the only exception to the time where you would ever file the edges of the brake pad. If you have to, you have to. Sometimes it's better to take metal off of here than just to try to take metal off the bracket because these can be replaced easy. And always make sure too that you have a backing plate on your brake pads. They should come with them. If they do not come with them, use the old ones. Now we're going to take, pull these pins out. We just pull the pin out a little bit and then pull the boot down off the pin. Pull the pin out a little bit, pull the boot down off the pin. And then you can go ahead and take your pin all the way out. This one here is the one that's got the little rubber piece on the bottom. And this one here does not. We're going to clean these up and put new grease in there. Wipe the old grease off, inspect the pin for wear, we don't have any wear, we don't have any rust, so everything was sealed up really well the last time around. This is why we do all the attention to the caliper bracket. This is, this is the whole brake job right here basically. This is the most important part and if your mechanic is not doing this for you, they're robbing you. And it does not mean pull it out, stick new grease on it, and shove it back in there. No. You take it out, clean it out, fill the bore with brake, brake clean, facing away from your face so you don't spray yourself. Got a good amount in there. A gun cleaning brush. Just go down there. Clean out the bore, get the old grease in there all dissolved and moved around and, and then go ahead and dump it out and then rinse it out. it out, put some fresh silicone. Put some fresh silicone on it. You don't need to go too nuts with it. It's probably a lot more than you actually need, but I like to make sure that everything is well coated. And I lead some of it in like that first. Get it inside the boot. And then rotate and work that grease all the way around as you go down in. Now I like to take some of this grease and go around the outside of the boot with it. This makes my fingers really gross, but this silicone helps to treat and keep this boot soft. So you get your wrinkle wrinkle and your wrinkle wrinkle will stay there. Let's get the other one done. Again inspect it. Check for rust. If there's rust, clean it off. Clean out the bore. This one's in really good shape, so this is really easy. Most brakes aren't always that easy to do. 
but when they're done properly, the next time around they are. Now, Make sure you can push your pins all the way down flat. If you can't, you got too much grease in there. If you can't pull them back out, again, too much grease. You, if there's just the right amount, you'll still be able to move it around. Now we'll get a little grease on the outside of this. some anti-seize on the bracket in the grooves. You don't want to go nuts with this stuff anywhere actually. We want just enough on here to get it coated. surfaces that the uh, hardware clips come in contact with. Maybe a little extra. Try to be extra careful to not get this stuff on your hands because it will transfer to everything else that you touch. stuff is not the easiest stuff in the world to clean up. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Make sure that you don't have so much of it that it ends up getting in the middle because you don't want this stuff on your rotor and you don't want so much of this on there that when you put your hardware clips in you squish it out into the rotor. Just enough to get a nice coating on it. If you want to take the time to paint the surface, that's always a good option as well. This will probably last longer than painting though. And then once you've got it coated, just like that, all your surfaces that your hardware clips are going to come in contact with, go ahead and put your hardware clips in. This bag does come with the little metal pieces as well, the little springs. So we're going to need two springs. Okay, good. So two springs and two hardware shims. Want to make sure before we just go grabbing two that all four of our hardware shims are exactly the same. Because sometimes the top will be different than the bottom. Sometimes the right will be different from the left. Not very common, but it does occasionally happen. I like to take all four clips and just stack them all facing the same direction. Make sure they're all exactly the same size, exact same shape. All of the little tabs and pins are exactly the same. Uh, if they have anything stamped on them, I want to make sure the numbers that are stamped on them are all the same. Um, all four of these are exactly the same. So we got two for this side, two for the other side. Now that your bracket's all set, coated, ready to go, you got your wrinkle wrinkle. Go ahead and put the hardware clips, abutment clips in. This particular bag, there's a total of eight. 
with the four springs. We'll take out the springs. We already took out two for the other side. There's the two for this side. And we've got short and long, or short and wide, clips in here. All we want is the short ones. Because this one doesn't have the uh, extra large rotor. Four longer clips that won't fit in this bracket. We'll take the clips and just snap them down in place. Again, if they don't fit properly, they don't sit flat, they're either not the right ones or there's still too much scaling on the caliper brackets. Snap right down in nice and easily and flat, especially if they're decent quality. Make sure everything's all set and then you can go ahead and bolt your bracket in place, put some thread locker on the caliper bracket bolts, one drop on each. Just about out of thread locker. Oops, maybe just enough left for the last two. And then go ahead and bolt your bracket in place. bolted on. We're going to tighten those down. Try to get these tightened down evenly. Now we'll go ahead and put the brake pads in. Squealer goes up on the top or the leading edge of the inboard pad. So we're just going to put that in. And again, we are not going to be lubricating behind the brake pads because around here that again just attracts dust and dirt. Make sure that your backing plates are on your brake pads. If they don't come with them, use the old ones. They will help cut down on chatter. Once your brake pads are in place, just make sure that they move freely. If they do not move freely, take your caliper bracket back off finish cleaning up the scaling, make sure that these brake pads can move freely. If they do not, you have to force them in. You are going to cause brake problems. They must move freely. Again, they must move freely. Now we can go ahead and get the caliper ready to come back down. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're gonna inspect the fluid, which is uh, kind of greenish and yucky looking. Okay, so I'm going to exchange this fluid. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push the caliper pistons all the way back, which is going to bring this fluid up high. While they're all the way pushed in, I'm going to use turkey baster. I'm going to suck all of this, as much of this out of here as I possibly can. Then I'm going to fill it back up with fresh fluid. And then we'll turn around and pump the brake pedal to get everything seated. It will get the new fluid down in there. And then I'm going to bleed the uh, front brakes out a little bit too, just to get some more of this yucky stuff out of it. Okay, we're going to take the brake depressor, brake piston retractor, and we're going to set that right in here like so, a little off center. This is made for double piston, but we can use it on a single. And then just gently push the piston back in. The piston should go all the way back in relatively easily. Make sure that your boot doesn't bubble out anywhere. It's starting to up in the top. See right here, it's starting to bubble out. What you have to do is grab the boot and pull the boot just to let the air out of it. And then the boot should walk back down in. Once you've done that, go ahead and continue to depress it. All the way down in flat. That one's ready. Go do that on the other side. Alright, now we got 
these little metal clips. We're going to be putting these on the brake pads and they're going to want to fling the brake pads out so we're going to have to hold them together to put the caliper over them. But before I put the caliper on here, I'm going to coat the surface of the piston that makes contact with the brake pad and the ears of the caliper that make contact with the brake pad. I'm going to coat them with a little bit of anti-seize and that'll help to quiet down potential chatter noise, squealing, you know, any kind of unnecessary uh, vibration, unnecessary movement, squeaking. We want these brakes to last a nice long time for the customer who happens to deliver pizzas. So this is going to get a lot of wear. You, know, you got two and a half years out of these last ones, which is actually pretty good considering the amount of mileage and the type of work that he does. And then just the surface of the piston, don't need to coat the boot, just the piston. Just like that. And then we can take it off the hook. Make sure that we don't have any twist in the line. I'm going to go ahead and set that, oops, I almost forgot, got to get those little clips, set that where it won't fall down. These face towards the middle, so you put one in each of the little holes. Bottom of the hole, and right away the brake pad wants to try to escape. So we have to hold these together and bring the caliper down on top of it before releasing them and then make sure our slide pins are in place and sometimes you have to orient them so that they sit into the ear properly you have to rotate them once you got it in place go ahead and put your little bolts back up in and these also need some thread locker just one drop on each. Just try to not lose them here. All right, there's that one. Almost got a drop on that one. There we go. And then get those all the way in. Snug those down. Click. Now once everything is tight, make sure everything moves in and out nice and freely. Brake pads are moving. Calipers moving, slide pins. Nothing's binding up. We'll go finish up the other side and then we'll finish up the uh, brake fluid exchange. And we're letting the wiring hold this. Suck some of this up and out of here first. in the middle here. I don't want to stick my dirty, dirty fingers down in there, but pull this filter out. And we'll set that off to the side for the moment. Got a clean paper towel. Okay, and back to sucking out the rest of what's in here. Alright, 
Now we got as much out of there as we can get out of there. off anything that we spilled. up the hood. Once you pump the pedal, make sure that you got a nice firm pedal and that everything's all tightened up and everything's torqued. You're going to put the wheels back on, get it off the jack, the jack stands. Jack up right now. Tighten down all of your lug nuts, both sides of the car. Civic. If you guys found this one helpful and entertaining, please feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for upcoming videos. And don't forget, you got no more excuses. Pick up those wrenches. That one freed up. Let's 
stupid wrench. All right, this is a blooper. Oh, nice. Now let's get to the bracket. It is all ready for the hardware clips. Let's, these are called abutment clips, by the way. We'll go ahead and put these in place. Basically, line them up with their little hooks and snap them down in place. They should go all the way down in, sit down firmly, smoothly. If they don't, double check the way you got them lined up. If they don't fit correctly, they might not be the right ones. Sit all the way down firmly and flat. And go ahead and try. See how your brake pads feel in there. Okay, well, we have the wrong brake pads. You see this right here? You got that 8-inch gap, these are the wrong brake pads. Now, once you've got your brake pads down in place, we'll put the little spring clips in. As soon as I figure out where I put them. Let's see, those are the old ones. Alright, let's do this again. Leave him alone. 